Hey there, this is Math 6, Unit 8, Lesson 4 on dot plots today. All right, so first of all, it says 15 customers in a pizza shop were asked, how many toppings did you add to your cheese pizza? And the responses are shown in this table. We have 1, 2, 1, 3, 0. So we have a variety of numbers here, basically from about 0 to 3. Could you use a dot plot to represent the data? Represent the data just means as a way to show visually what this data looks like. And we look at this and say, yeah, we probably could. It probably would not be too difficult to make a dot plot for this one, right? Because you have numerical values, and you think this through a little bit, you know, you'd have zero, you could have a one, you could have a two, you could have a three, and you could put a dot for each one of those values, what it might be, right? So uh, zero, for example, one, two, three, four, we could put one, two, three, four dots for the zero. For the ones, we have one, two, three, four, five, and we could put one, two, three, four, and five. We have one, two, three, four twos, so one, two, three, four. And for the threes, we have one, two, threes, just like that. So you certainly could make a dot plot to show um, how many topics people put on a pizza and get a good feel for, okay, what do people generally do? Okay, now you can also make a table. So we could take this table and we can put in a table like this. When we make a table like this and we see how many, in terms of how many of each topping they chose, that again is a frequency. So this becomes a frequency table of how many toppings each person put on there. And so for how many were zero, I could look back at my dot plot real quick and say, well, four people had no toppings. There's one more than four there, so five people had one topping. Four people had two toppings, and two people had three toppings. So using the dot plot is pretty easy for me to count up how many there were quickly, much more uh, with much more speed than I did over here the first time. I could just look and check that out. But we can make a table, and now I have a frequency table to see how many people or how many people chose zero toppings, one topping, two, three, and so on. Okay. So in the next activity, it wants you to take the dot numbers from the table and to put them into a dot plot, which we've already done. So I can do that again real quick. That doesn't take much time at all. So let's do this one, two, three, four. And then we had five for the one topping. We had four for the two toppings. And we had two for the three toppings. Okay, so this dot plot goes from zero to six has the same dots here, but definitely extending it out further to the right, you can see uh, some patterns, can't you, <laughs> right? So it says, use your dot plot to study the dis distribution for number of toppings. What do you notice about the number of toppings that this group of customers ordered? And write two to three sentences about it. So if this is the dot plot we're looking at, what could we say about this? Well, first of all, it wants us to label this. Um, so we wanna call the bottom part number of toppings so that we know what this is representing here and we could say that most customers did what? Most customers um, ordered zero to two toppings right and we could say no customers wanted more than three toppings, Oops, two P's, three toppings, right? And we can see that there's no one here that wanted more than three, and we can see most people wanted zero to two. So those are some statements you could make summarizing what you observe in that dot plot, and that's really how that works. So then, then the last, next question with this one here, think of a statistical question that can be answered with the data above about the number of toppings ordered as displayed in the dot plot that answer this question. So a question you might think of oh, excuse me, is something like, to make a statistical question, what percentage of people ordered three toppings on their pizza? Now as a number, or as a fraction, because again a well, We'll do this here. We have two people ordered 
three toppings out of a total of, again, this is five, and then we had eight, so eight and two is 10, two out of 15. Okay, so then as a percentage, we want to do that real quick there. Two divided by 15. It's going to give us, we'll say about 0 0.133. So as a percent, we move that over two spaces, we have 13%. So about 13% of people surveyed put three toppings on their pizza. All right. Pretty cool. And you could make other statistical questions too. You know, what percentage of people ordered, you know, no ordered no toppings on their pizza, but percent ordered, you know, an odd number. You could do lots of things. So that's up to you. In the homework time activity, it says that 25, 25 sixth graders answered the question, how many hours do you generally spend on homework each week? Why is this question a statistical statistical question? Well, the reason why it is, okay, how many, you have things like how many hours do you spend, and you're talking about sixth graders, 25 of them, okay, the only way to answer that is you have to collect data, okay, so we can say one reason it's a, it is a statistical question is it's answered by collecting data, that's one thing. The other reason it is statistical is we can expect variability. And again, what do you mean by variability? We mean we can expect a variety of responses from the students. If we're asking 25 kids how much, how many hours do you spend on homework, we're not going to get one answer. We're going to get one hour, two hours, zero hours, you know, half of an hour, uh, another four hours. We're going to get a variety of answers when we ask kids that question. So because we're going to get variability and we have to answer it by asking a whole bunch of people and getting some data, that makes it a statistical question. In the dot plot on number two, it shows the number of hours per week that 25 students reported spending time on homework. So someone asked 25 kids and here's how much time they spent on their homework. Anywhere from zero hours to nine hours per week. And it's, low, it's uh, labeled here for us. So use the dot plot to answer this question. What percentage of students reported spending one hour on homework each week? So we look here and we have one, two, three, four, five. Pretty simple to count with the dots, right? So five kids out of 25. And again, remember, we know 25 right away because it told us 25 students responded to the survey. So five divided by 25 is about is equal to 0 0.20. So as a percentage, we move that decimal over two spaces and we end up with 20%, all right? Pretty easy to find that percentage. So it does take some work, but you can actually answer the statistical question of what percent of kids spent an hour on homework. All right, how about this one? What percentage of students reported spending four or fewer hours? So for four or fewer, we're gonna have four included and fewer all the way this way. So we wanna be able to count up all of these ones. Now there's more dots there to count, certainly, but we could do that. So we know we have five and nine, and one more makes 10. Then we have 13 and four more make 17. So there are 17 dots that are in the value of four or less out of 25. And 14, or 17 divided by 25 is equal to 0 0.68. So then again, as a percentage, we move that two spaces to the right by multiplying by 100 is how we do that, in case you forgot. And that becomes 68%. So that's some percentage you can get just from the dots. There are other questions you could answer too by looking and making um, some conclusions or summaries from the table. Number three is an example. Would six hours per week be a good description of the number of hours this group of students spends on homework per week? So six hours. So let's think about this here. If you said, yeah, most kids spend six hours per week on homework, does that describe what you see happening here? Here's six right there. So when you look at six, six is this value right there. 
does that value, that number, describe mm, kind of in general what's happening overall? We would say, no, I'd probably say no, it, it really doesn't. And the reason it doesn't is it seems to be that that's a pretty high number, right? It's a pretty high value compared to many of the responses. Right? I mean, there's already 17, 18, 19 values that are less, right? So 19 out of 25 are less than 6. That's a pretty big number, okay? So 6 is just way too much. What about one hour per week? Okay, and looking at the one hour, does that represent, right? Does it represent this sample here? Okay, is a good description of it. Well, again, one hour is over here. And while it does have the most, it had five, there's a lot more that go past there. So we would say, no, it is the most frequent but still too low to be a description. Because again, there's five, well, there's five there. That means there's 20, and actually, if you don't count the zero, there are 19 out of 25 are more. Right, that's five, six, so that means there's 19 values here that are actually bigger than one. So again, not a good description of that group. So the question then becomes, this is what we do with statistics, what value do you think would be a good description of the homework time of the students in this group? Explain your reasoning. So what would be a good description value? So looking at all these numbers, where do you think we would say, yeah, that kind of describes it. And it sometimes what you're talking about here is, which one is kind of like in the middle, right? Or which one of these is kind of typical for what you're seeing here? You know, one that would kind of make the most sense. So when something is in the middle or typical, we're saying it's kind of near the center. And as we go on, we'll talk more about this later on. But if you're talking about more of being in the center, one thing you could do is you could say, well, where is the center? Well, there's 25, so I'm going to go to dot number 13 and just say where the center is real quick. So we have 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 is right here at 3. So one of these dots is the center. So my center is about here when I look at all the data points. I have half of them on this side of the line, the other half about on that side of the line there. So which one would be a good description? I could definitely say 3, right? So 3 is a good idea. Now the problem I have with 3 is that if I say 3 is the center, then I have only in this case here, 10 over here, but then I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 over here if 3 is a center. So it's a little bit between 3 and 4, plus if you look here, we're only going, we have 0 is 1, 2, 3 away, and 1, 2, 3 away is 6. I have these other ones over here that are pretty far away. So those guys here spend way too much time at homework compared to the rest. So I would say anywhere between 3 and 4 um, hours is a good description. You could definitely say three if you wanted to, but you could go away anywhere between three and four, and that would be acceptable as well. Someone said, in general, these students spend roughly the same number of hours doing homework. Do you agree? Well, I do not agree. I would disagree. Again, looking at our table, we had numbers from zero to nine hours on homework. So to say that's roughly the same, zero to nine hours is definitely not the same. If it was like the pizza toppings and you're talking about zero to two, that would be pretty much the same. Not a huge difference there, especially when you consider that could go all the way up to six, right? So zero to nine is not gonna be the same. It means there's a lot of uh, variability in the amount of time that students spend on their homework. So to summarize today, we often collect and analyze data because we're interested in learning what is typical and what is common and can be expected in a group, right? 
So what's common, what can be expected. Sometimes it's easy to tell what a typical member of the group is. For example, we can see the typical shape in this set is a large circle. There are a lot of large circles, so it's pretty typical. But just looking at the members of the group doesn't tell us what is typical. However, for example, if we're interested in the side length of typical squares in this set, it isn't easy to do so just by studying it visually. Right? I need some actual, some more specific, specific data is needed. So in situations like that, it's helpful to gather the side links and make a dot plot, right? Then I can start and see, oh, three is the largest, and I can see where things are. We can see that many of the data points are between two and four, so we could say that lengths between two and four centimeters are close, and they are typical of the squares that are in that box, okay? So that's kind of what you're looking at there. I hope that helps you out. So we're going to pause and work on your homework, and we'll come back and check that in just a few minutes. Claire recorded the amounts of time spent doing homework in hours per week by students in 6th and 8th and 10th grade. Sorry, this is homework, by the way. <laughs> uh, she made a dot plot on the num of the data for each grade and provided the following summary. She said students in 6th grade tend to spend less time on homework than students in 8th and 10th. So 6th grade is spending less time than 8th and 10th graders. And then she said the homework times for 10th grade students are more alike. So 10th grade students are more alike. So they're very similar, right? Than for 8th grade. So 8th grade is not alike. Okay, so more alike means that they're going to be kind of together. The data is going to be together. And if they're not together, not alike, it's more what we call spread out a little bit. So I'll use Claire's summary to match with each one of the pictures here. So sixth grade spends less time than eighth and ninth. So let's look for that one first. So what do I see? I see, first of all, I see that the times are the same all the way through. I see kind of a cluster of numbers here. For this group 1721 this group I see kind of the cluster here and this one the cluster is just right there a little tighter together right so which one of the groups has with probably the, the, the cluster of numbers more to the left less time than others I'd go with this one here right it seems to be less than both of those so this one seems to probably match the sixth graders so let's call this a sixth grade one here for B and then it said 10th grade, if that's that, then I've left, what I've left is 10th and 8th. And it says 10th grade is more alike, so it's more clustered together than the 8th grade, which is more spread out. And we can see 10th grade is all really close together, and 8th is all apart. So I'm going to call this one 10th grade, and we'll call this one 8th grade. Again, they both have similar kind of averages there, what, what they do, what's the middle, but 8th grade definitely is more spread. It goes from 14 all the way to 21. This one goes 16 to 20, so much closer together. And that's how I would kind of estimate those to be. Now May played basketball, or played 10 basketball games. She recorded the number of points she scored and made a dot plot. She said she scored between eight and 14 points in most of the 10 games, but one game was exceptional. During that game, she scored more than double her typical score of nine points. Use the number line to make a dot plot that fits the description May gave. Now one thing you notice here on this one, um, uh, and there's, there's a variety of answers, there's not just one here because again you're just making what you think could be, you don't have any data. Um, if you assume that she can't make an odd number of points, then you're just going to make a dot plot that uses the numbers here in the line, even. So if the typical score is about 9, if the typical score is 9, then you're going to have most of your scores be 8 and 10, pretty balanced there. Okay? Now, there's only 10 basketball games. So maybe you put down 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. That so far makes a typical score in the middle about 9. There was one game which did more than double her typical. So if 9 was that, you could have her double score be over here at 18. So now we're sitting at 6, 7 games. We have 3 more games to go. So we could put another one at 12. It does say she scored between 8 and 14. So we need to put another one at 12 and 14. 
and then I need one more dot to put on. I'm going to put it at 8 just so a little one bounces out some of the big ones and I could put it something like that. So I did four dots, three, one, one, and one. Is that perfect? No, it's just my estimate of what it could be. But that's, you know, that's what you're supposed to do. So that's what I say. Let's look at the next side. A movie theater is showing three different movies. The dot plot represents the ages of the people who were at the Saturday afternoon showing of each of the movies. So here we have people kind of from 35 to 45. You know, maybe about the middle there is about maybe 40 or so. Hard to say, but somewhere about there looks middle-ish. Over here we have a big chunk of little kids, right? So these are young kids with some adults spread out. And over here, this kind of spreads there. Probably the middle maybe is somewhere about 30-ish or so. So one of these movies was an animated rated G for general audiences. Do you think it was movie A, B, or C? So to be a G movie, most likely you're talking about young kids are going to watch that. Or me, because I like those movies too. They're a lot of fun. So here we go. I would say that this group here has the largest number of little kids, more than any other one. So I would go movie B, right? And reason for that, we would say, in your reasoning, is there were a lot of young children present at that movie. The older ages could represent what? Probably their parents who took them there. Because <laughs> you're probably not going to have a lot of five-year-olds that drove themselves. Which movie has a dot plot, again make sure you explain, has a dot plot with ages that, that center about 30 years? Well, we looked at that a second ago and we said that looked like uh, C, looked like about 30. And for a typical age, the most about the center, for people at movie A, we said that looked to us about 40. Those were our estimates there. So again, write those down and make sure you kind of note, make a note of those. So being at center and typical, same idea. And finally, number four, find the value of each expression. These are just some computational ones that you need to do. So I think these are ones that you should be able to do yourself. We're going to go ahead and you can make sure you set them up the right way. 1.384. So make sure you add, align your values like that. Make sure on the subtraction one, you still make sure you line up your place values, right, like so. And then on the multiplication one, 5.01 times 4.8. Make sure after you do that, you make a note of where your decimals are. You have three digits behind a decimal. And your last one, 4.8 divided by, or sorry, 5.01 divided by 4.8. You have to move that decimal over one spot and put it up top right away. You are, in this case here on this one, you're going to need several zeros, okay? So you have to go that far when you do that, okay? So 48, for example, goes into 50 one time. So that becomes 48, and you subtract, and you have 2. You bring down the 1. 48 goes into 21 zero times. So now you have to bring down this zero. 48 goes in 210, it goes in there four times, okay, and that becomes 192. This is going to go on all the way out there. So I'm going to leave it there for now, let you solve those ones, because we're at the end of the school year, so you should be getting good at that. All right, have a great day. See you next time.